For the past week, I've been discovering the beautiful coasts and landscapes of Northern Ireland, which makes up one sixth of the island of Ireland. But now it's time to explore the Republic of Ireland. More specifically, I'm heading to the West Coast, home of the Wild Atlantic Way. At 1600 miles in length, the Wild Atlantic Way is one of the longest coastal routes in the world. Following a dramatic coastline with towering cliffs, mystical islands, and rolling farmland, the route winds its way past picturesque villages, castles, and a stunning countryside. It's an ideal place to explore by car, foot, or by boat. Of course, I was drawn here by the idea of exploring the coast by kayak, but what I quickly discovered is that there's much more to the Wild Atlantic Way than a breathtaking coastline. Paddle Tales is produced with support from NRS, Aquabound, Wiley X, and PHC Kayaks. Well, you can't come to Ireland and not expect a bit of rain, and that's what we've got today. But uh, the adventures continue. We are going to take a look at the underworld here at the Doolin Capes. <laughs> It goes down a ways. Well, we are now in the underbelly of Ireland. You know, I've heard a lot of people say over the years that I'm crazy for being a whitewater kayaker or a sea kayaker, paddling the open ocean. I'll tell you who's crazy. The people who explore these caves for the first time, we, that is a real adventure. Uh -huh. Wow, I need one of these for my dining room. Well, it's pretty cool to see the dark depths of Ireland, but I've got more dark depths to explore, and it shouldn't be too hard to find a Guinness at one of the local pubs. Hey, <laughs> hey. Well, you don't need rainy weather to enjoy a Guinness and fish and chips in Ireland, but it's a good excuse to do it a little earlier than you might otherwise. Oh yeah. Well, I'm in a little town called Ballyvon, getting ready to get my first taste of West Coast paddling. Uh, I've hooked up with Patrick from North Clare Sea Kayaking, and we're heading out into Galway Bay. Hopefully the rain holds off because there is some beautiful views to be had. I'm also testing out a new P&H kayak, the Scorpio, and can't think of a better place to test a kayak than Ireland. <laughs> Here we go. We're um, a little north of Ballyvaughan, a small little town called Bell Harbour. From Bell Harbour, we're gonna be exploring a beautiful little inlet, lots of castles, lots of birds. Hopefully the seals will be there. Um, and then we're gonna be heading west 
out of Bell Harbour into Ballyvaughan Bay, out across the Martello Tower that sits on Finnevara Peninsula on the northern side of Ballyvaughan Bay and then we're going to go out into Galway Bay, uh, heading west into Galway Bay, out towards the Aran Islands. We had to get an early start this morning, basically hit the water right around sunrise because high tide was first thing in the morning and in order to, to really get in here and take full advantage of this little offshoot uh, of Galway Bay, we had to put in it at high tide. Now the tide's going out and it seems like the sun is wanting to peek its head out, but you know what? Whether the sun pops out or not, sometimes it's these days where you have the, the low clouds and the mist and the fog. Just a really cool feel. They're better than the sunny days. Ooh, we got sun! For a couple of seconds. I'm doing this trip with Patrick from uh, North Clare Sea Kayaking. He started this sea kayaking guiding company 14 years ago and he's been doing it and loving it ever since. I feel like he was born to be a sea kayak guide. He has a love for the marine environment, the ocean, the outdoors, and, and everything that surrounds it. But on top of that, he just loves getting people on the water and sharing the experience and his backyard with people. That's a release. For me, sea kayaking now is a release. It's an escape in a way. Um, we can all have so many things going on in our daily life that it's just nice to to get out on the water and kind of leave those troubles on shore for a little bit. I enjoyed it so much that this is where North Clare Sea Kayaking came from. You know, just getting people to come and explore the coastline and just see what we have to offer here in Ireland as a, as a sea kayaking destination. That is pretty cool. What's this one called again? This is uh, Shan Mokanish. Shan Mokanish. So Shan Mokanish being, Shan is Irish for old. Uh, so old Mokanish castle. Beautiful structure, beautiful arches. You can still see the lime render oh, yeah. on the ceilings and on the walls in here. Looks a little worn. <laughs> very worn. This is probably Very built. worn. So it would have been built uh, late 14th into the 15th century. Okay. And the style of castle, the style of stonework is very similar to what we see in a lot of castles around North Clare. So yeah, I mean, this castle would have been knocked, would have been destroyed when in around 1650, um, when Cromwell came here. Quite a lot of history there. Um, Quite a lot of history in Ireland. For sure, <laughs> for sure. Well, we're just moving into Galway Bay now, and we got a bunch of current helping us out, about a five knot current, a little bit of a tailwind. We're gonna be covering some miles pretty quick right now, but I think that's where we wanna go first. Another tower. One of the things I really wanted to do coming to uh, Ireland was paddle around castles. You don't get to do that very often when you're in North America. I think that's one of the most unique things about this particular trip that we did is the variety of castles and the castles really have, of course they have different stories, but they come from different times too and they're there for different purposes. It really has been a, a, a great day of paddling around castles. Well, this one's a little different than the last one. Well, it's fully standing, Ken. Beautiful Martello Tower, built during the Napoleonic Wars. It's a fantastic tower, always watching out for piracy as well. So yes, I mean, this tower, it's pretty special that um, it's the only tower in Ireland that has its cannon on top. Oh, really? Um, so there's a huge brass cannon up there. And on the top of it, it's kind of shaped like a, a shamrock. So there would have been three circles 
with three huge cannons that would have been able to, to swing the 360 degrees. But these were pretty much um, abandoned um, from around about 1920 when Ireland got got its independence. So <laughs> they've been abandoned since. We've also, I mean, so we've turned the corner here. This is much bigger body water. This is Galway Bay. We've come out of Bell Harbor, out of Bally Vaughan Bay, right into Galway Bay. Absolutely. So, so we have about, can't really see the other side, but we can't. There's a, there's a fair bit of water ahead of us, but we're going that way -ish. We certainly are. We're going to be heading west. Okay. Um, so we're going to be heading out to Ilan Lu and then up towards Glen Ina Castle. All right. Well, we're in Galway Bay now. It's uh, all of a sudden got a little bit of waves, a little swell, not much at all, but if we were to paddle straight across the bay, it'd be about five and a half miles or so, but that's not what we're doing. We're just paddling across the section, uh, across the Ballybon Bay to Glenini Castle. The fog or mist or clouds have rolled in, and so we can't see the other shoreline but we know it's that way. <laughs> Wind can be a huge factor on whether we can get to run these sea kayaking sessions. Usually when we get wind, we're probably getting swell. Um, and the west coast of Ireland is, is exposed. It can be quite a swell magnet for huge waves. But a vast majority of the time, just those elements come together, blue skies, slack winds, and it works for us. But don't be coming to Ireland expecting blue skies, 30 degrees. If you get it, you're lucky, you know, but it's all about the experience. Um, and the weather certainly plays a big part in that. Well, the clouds have lifted enough to see our next destination, Glenina Castle, just up here, which is where we're going to stop for a quick lunch and hope that the clouds continue to lift so we can see the, the hillsides here. Perfect day to stop off at a castle for lunch. <laughs> I could get used to this. Sunsets, waterfalls, and rainbows. Doesn't matter how many times you see them, they're always cool. And now there's another one for the list. Castles. My daughter's really been getting on me lately that I'm old. She's always saying how old I am. That's old. I'm not old. That is old. It's also cooler than me. One of the nice things about paddling in a protected bay like this is that you can get out of your kayak and take a little walk around, explore. Explore off the water and not just on the water. And when you can do that around castles, well, <laughs> That's pretty cool. Well, the clouds are starting to lift, especially over that way, and that's where Ballyvon is, and that is where we're heading, about four kilometers away. Well, it was worth the wait, I'd say. Had to wait all day for the sun to pop out, but wow, what a view.
Well, what a way to finish. The powers that be were definitely on our side today. Gotta say a big thanks to Patrick and uh, North Clare Sea Kayaking for having me out here and showing me his backyard. My adventures are actually, are far from done here on the west coast of Ireland. So stay tuned, we got more of that. Something else I'll be doing is I'm gonna be doing a full review of this sucker here, the p &H Scorpio. This is my first time paddling this boat. This was my test run and I'm not gonna spoil the surprise right now. You're gonna have to tune into that video to see my full review on this boat. I'll leave a link in the description box down below. Otherwise, stay tuned. We got lots more paddling adventures, paddling tips, and gear reviews coming your way.